Back to one of our top stories, that magnitude 8.8 earthquake that struck Russia's far east coast overnight. A quake that strong produces power equivalent to one trillion kilograms of TNT. It struck in an area known as the Pacific Ring of Fire, a region surrounding the Pacific Ocean that's especially susceptible to earthquakes as well as volcanic eruptions. Simon Boxall joins us now for more. He's a professor at the University of Southampton in the UK and has a PhD in oceanography. Simon, thank you for being us, being here with us. I, tell me about this Pacific Ring of Fire. Why is this area so prone to massive earthquakes? Basically, the planet's made up of tectonic plates. And where we get these ocean plates butting against the continental plates, the ocean plates slide under the continental plates. And this movement's been going on since the Earth was formed. And um, it's an important process. Uh, without the tectonic plates, we'd live on a very different world today. Um, but every so often, as these plates slide together, that rubbing causes earthquakes. And that's what the earthquake is basically in this case. Now, where are the plates sliding underneath? Uh, we have the Pacific plate um, in the open ocean going under what's a very small plate. It's called the Okhotsk plate. It's an odd name to pronounce. Uh, it's a very small plate uh, which sits um, in the sort of area between China and that peninsula in Japan. And that's a really active area. In fact, we've seen uh, a couple of big earthquakes in that specific area in the last um, 70 years. Um, and as the uh, tectonic plate goes underneath the uh, continental plate, uh, eventually friction takes over and the whole thing flips up. And that creates the tsunami. And we get these earthquakes all around the Pacific Rim. There are several every day. It's just very uh -huh. rare they become this big. So can you explain to those of us who say, Myself, I live in Los Angeles. We're always waiting for the big one. But why do certain areas get those tsunami warnings? The tsunamis can occur any time we get an earthquake. It's not all tsunami, all earthquakes create tsunamis. It depends very much on the way in which the plate flips. And in this case, I think they were relatively lucky. Um, it did cause a tsunami. It wasn't on a par with the tsunami in Japan in 2011, which was huge, and nor the one in Indonesia in 2004. Mm -hmm. So this one created quite a devastating wave actually on the Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia. It caused a four meter wave, which has caused damage. We don't know yet whether there are any casualties. But by the time it reached Japan, the wave is moving across the ocean at about 500 miles an hour, the speed of a jet. As it approaches Japan, it was about two meters, just under two meters high. And then it moved across the Pacific towards Hawaii, um, and then eventually hit the west coast of the US. And by that stage, different reports coming in, it was between one and a half meters in Hawaii down to probably two or three feet by the time it reached uh, the west coast of America. So although it was significant, it wasn't devastating uh, mm -hmm. in the same way as a meter tsunami might be, 30, 32 foot. Simon Boxall, thank you so much for your insight today. We appreciate it. Thank you.